What's up everyone, this is uh, Dr. Webb here. I am uh, currently uh, filming this video in Germany on the way to uh, Austria. But um, I wanted to um, speak on a uh, common question that I get all the time. Uh, I get a lot of questions and uh, email from uh, various people. Um, uh, all over the world. Uh, that's in a very similar uh, question, a question that, that even I had when I was uh, uh, going through the process of applying. And that question is, what should I do if I uh, fail the uh, MCAT? Um, and number one, first thing I want you guys to uh, know and remember is that uh, you, you are not alone. Uh, there are lots of people out there who uh, struggle with standardized test taking. Um, I especially was, was uh, one of them. Um, so I want you to know that, like I said, you, you're not alone. Um, number, number one is um, four different things I want you guys to know. Number one is don't panic. Um, like I said, it, it is very common. It happens more than you think. Uh, people just don't talk about it. People fail the uh, tests uh, all the time. It's, it's, it's a hard test. Um, so that's what I wanted you to uh, provide that uh, reassurance to you. Number two is um, find out your weak areas. <clears throat> um, my weak areas were the um, biological section and also the verbal uh, reasoning section. I understand that the MCAT has changed since the last time I took it. I think I took it in 2008, 2007, around that time. But um, find out what your weak areas are. If your, your scores are are low in one particular area, then you need need to um, you need to obviously focus on those areas. Um, and this comes down to the number three, which which is uh, make a plan. Um, your biological section is low. Uh, you need to do whatever it takes to um, bring up that score. Um, this could be hiring a tutor. This could be uh, someone who specializes in that particular topic. This can be um, just going to your professor's office and beating down the door and just. Uh, say I'm not going anywhere until you you um, you know help me and and um, on these particular con concepts and topics that I need help with. Um, number three is to um, um, any preparatory programs. Um, there are lots of preparatory programs out there. I took the Kaplan program and also the uh, Princeton program, both which I thought were help which were uh, helpful. Um, and some of you, you, you may be saying that, oh, that's very expensive. I'm not sure if I can afford that. But trust me, this is a very good investment. If you think about how much money you'll make as a physician, um, it's not comparable to what you'll pay for that, uh, you know, two, three thousand um, dollar, um, you know, preparatory program. So if you if you can come across the money or a credit card, I don't. I encourage people to uh, charge things on credit cards, but if you can somehow um, uh, get some money from family members or from people who can uh, maybe loan you the money, I think that will definitely help you in the long run. And number four is basically to uh, retake the MCAT. Uh, you have to have a solid plan. Uh, you have to be able to attack that plan. And what I see it most commonly is for people who are uh, but not very disciplined in their studies get distracted very easily. Um, you have to be, uh, you have to tell your family members and friends that, hey, for these next six weeks or two months or however long you take to uh, take the MCAT, that uh, I'm not going to be, be able to get in touch with. And it's just one of those um, sacrifices that you have to make which will uh, pay off in the long run. And uh, if you lose those friends, then uh, they were not obviously friends in the first place. So. Uh, I would say that uh, you need to be very disciplined in your studies. You need to set aside some time. I actually quit my job in the ICU uh, where I was working as a um, ICU uh, tech and uh, decided to, to uh, focus on my studies. And that was a big sacrifice because, uh, you know, I, I had a house payment, I had a car payment, and I had all these bills I had to pay. But I knew that um, if I wanted to be successful that uh, I needed to make those sacrifices and, and it, it paid off. Um, I ended up taking the, a little, little bit about me, I ended up taking the MCAT three times and uh, I, I struggled each time and I took it. Uh, standardized uh, test taking is not my uh, forte, but um, I worked at it each time and I figured out where my weak areas were and I went after those areas. Um, there's, there was nothing that was going to stop me from 
um, you know, accomplishing my goal, which was to become a physician. And a lot of people may not uh, necessarily believe me when I say this, but the um, I thought the MCAT was actually harder, more challenging than the actual like step one, step two, step three at medical school. Um, and you're taking step three and, and residency, but uh, just because in college um, I started off uh, kind of slow and um, I didn't even know about the MCAT until almost close to, close to uh, graduation. So I didn't pay attention to those uh, key areas, key concepts that you need to say, pay attention to. And I didn't develop that foundation. In medical school, I knew from day one that step one was coming up in you know, about two years. So I uh, made sure that from day one, I understood everything. I took the time to um, learn the uh, concepts um, so that uh, when it came down to taking the step one, I actually did extremely well. Um, the MCAT is no, studies have shown the MCAT is no predictor of how well you would do in medical school. It's just a weeding out factor. And I just wanted to leave that, those uh, tips with you guys and tell you good luck, stay encouraged, and uh, if I can do it, you can also. Study hard.